Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. My name is Kartik, one of the co-founders of ETH Global, and I am super excited to welcome all of you to ETH Online 2023. This is our finale, and you're watching all of this on ethglobal.tv, and this is what we're going to be using for the rest of the day to talk about all the amazing things that came out of this event and our last summit for this event. So ETH Online is run by ETH Global, and we have a very simple mission. Our goal is to onboard thousands of developers into the Web3 ecosystem. And we do this primarily by running hackathons and summits. ETH Online was our biggest event of the year. And it was a whole month full of amazing content around what's happening in the Web3 ecosystem. We ran four different summits, <clears throat> the fourth one being today, just after our, our demos. Uh, we talked about what's happening with all the different EIPs and upgrades that are coming on Ethereum. We talked about best practices around security and how you think about writing safe code. We covered this Wednesday, past Wednesday, all the things that matter and will matter when we get to massive scale and how data availability changes the game and how you can account for making things a lot more easy to, to manage and more decentralized. And today, we're going to be talking about the impact of Ethereum for how it's touching millions of people across the world from various different fields, everything from UNICEF to developers in, in different countries to the, the growth of stable coins. But the next hour and a half is about the hackathon. This is officially our biggest event ever in our entire seven year history. We had 2,005 hackers from 96 different countries spent the last three weeks from 20 different time zones building incredible projects. People came from 500 plus cities. And this is just to show you where everybody's coming from. And it's still amazing to see <clears throat> incredible representation from six different continents. Not only that, we had 164 ecosystem partners and four dedicated mentors who were there the entire month to help all of them get their questions answered, get unblocked and get help and get to building the projects that they were personally excited to build. And to top it all off, we're going to be giving $225,000 in prizes and you're going to see who won all those amazing, incredible prizes uh, very soon. So <clears throat> these 2,000 plus hackers spent the last few weeks building an insane amount of projects. And we're proud to announce that after this event, the submission deadline, we saw 515 projects that came out of ETH Online. This is the most projects we've ever seen. And we had to change up a lot of things to make sure that we get to review, judge, and manage everything in just the past few days, because this blew our minds and beat all the expectations. So before we get into all those projects, I want to take a quick minute to thank all of our incredible partners. And there are the ones that are going to be giving away a lot of these prizes. So tune in for the rest of this to hear about what you won if you participated. So I want to quickly thank Scroll, Spark, ApeCoin, Uma, Wormhole, Filecoin, Hyperlane, Polygon, Mantle, XLR, Safe, Mask, Sysmo, Comet, Aztec, Connext, Compound Grants Program, Tableland, Chainlink, Push Protocol, Lit, the Graph, Uniswap Foundation, XMTP. <clears throat> so these are our amazing partners, and let's get to these 515 projects. After judging, we spent hours going through everything from the feedback to the scores to all the things that we had to consider, and we ended up with 11 finalist teams. What's going to happen for the next hour is we're going to bring on these 11 teams and they're going to demo what they built live to show all of you what they were excited about for the last few weeks. And then we're going to go into all the prizes. So please join me in congratulating our 11 amazing finalists for ETH Online 2023. We have ZKVRF, Sherlock, Cryptopolis, EVM Plus, Cosmic Cowboys, Coinu, Pact, Shop Connect, WalletX, ZTF, and Bear Bonds. These 11 teams are going to come on one by one and show you what they built. But before we go into our very first demo, I'm going to take a quick second to thank 494 of these teams that are listed here <clears throat> for all the amazing things you've built over the past few weeks. Uh, you managed to accomplish something and set a goal for yourself to build something that you were personally excited about. And even if you didn't make it to these top 11, it doesn't mean that you were not good enough. It doesn't mean there was something wrong with it. Our goal, and this was even more challenging this time around, was to highlight some interesting and incredible themes that we're seeing in this in this ecosystem and show them to you live. And that's what being a finalist means. So I wanna thank everybody listed here 
and the year for taking the time to work with amazing people from all across the world. A lot of you met so many people from different parts of the world, built something together and showcased it to our judges, to our partners, and talked about why you were excited to build these projects. I really hope that you continue to build what you started this month and don't hesitate to ping us if you need any help with taking the projects further, or if you need to talk to anybody in the space that you would like to get feedback from, or just anything that ETH Global team can help you out with. So congratulations to every single team here. And for those of you who are tuning in and were not a participant at the hackathon, you can now head over to ethglobal.com slash showcase to see every single project that came out of this event. <clears throat> so before we go into the first demo, I want to take a quick second for all of our participants to remind them that if you have not filled out the quick two minute survey on your dashboards, please do this right now, if possible. We really wanna make sure that we account for all the things that we can do here to make this super easy for you to participate in a future event or make it even easier for somebody to come into this ecosystem uh, in the future. Uh, just answering a few things, yes or no, rate this, rate this out of 10, helps us really change up the things that we are doing to make sure that we have the best experience for all of you. So please, please, please take the, the minute and uh, give us that feedback to make everything else better. All right, enough talking for me. Let's get ready for our very first finalist demo for the day. So without further ado, let's bring on WalletX as our first finalist demo. So GM folks, uh, my name is Arjun I'm my, and my teammates Shakti, Suraj and Bhumik, we are team WalletX. So WalletX is a completely non-custodial state-of-the-art smart wallet that is here to enable your smart assets to interact in a smarter way on chain. So without further ado, let's get to the demo. Let's see what WalletX is all about. So these are the onboarding screens, as you can see. And WalletX is secured by pass keys. So you can sign in using your biometric. So I'll use my fingerprint and yeah. So right now WalletX is registering my uh, device and it takes you to the dashboard where it creates a smart wallet address. So WalletX is live in multiple EVM chains as you can see here. And uh, <clears throat> uh, we are also coming up with swap, bridge and cross chain swap features. So let's take a quick demo of a batch transaction. So I'll just transfer WMATIC. So while uh, while we do transaction, uh, batch transaction, we'll also be paying for gas fees using WMATIC itself. So we can pay gas fees in any ERC20 tokens that you want. <clears throat> so as you, uh, in a moment, uh, we'll have the wrapmatic here. Just check. So meanwhile, this is happening. So uh, we'll be even launching uh, DAP interactions, DAP uh, connections. So you can use WalletX with your favorite DAP to do transactions from your DAP. I think it's taking a bit more time. I just increase the gas fees and submit it again. <clears throat> Yeah, cool. So now you can see the balance here in a moment. Uh, in yeah, so you have Wrapmatic. So I'll click on transfer. I'll paste the address. So this is the uh, UI of the transaction screen. So every box represents an entire transaction. So you can select the asset here. I'll select Wmatic. I'll do 0 0.001. And you can add multiple transactions as well. So I'll just click on the plus button. Yeah. So we'll do another transaction. And as you can see, we have the review screen here where your, all the transactions are listed. You can even 
choose which uh, token you want to pay the gas fees. So I'll choose uh, Wmatic in here. And you have to approve the transaction using a biometric. So I'll give my biometric authentication. And in a moment, the transaction will be done. Your smart contract will be deployed and uh, your batch transactions will be done. <clears throat> Yeah, cool. So I'll just copy this transaction hash. I'll redirect to the dashboard. Yeah, so we have the batch transaction here. So these are the two transactions that I did. This is the Rapmatic that I paid gas fees. And uh, you can see the ba updated balance in here, which will appear in a moment. Uh, yeah, so the Matic balance is zero and wrap Matic balance has changed. So this is what we did with Volatex. You can also import your tokens and track your own custom tokens from here. And uh, we'll additionally, we'll also be coming up with features to set up recovery and you can set up multiple devices for your pass keys as well. So this is Volatex and uh, you can download Volatex from the Chrome store. Yeah, so Volatex is already live, so you can visit volatex.info and uh, you can download Volatex from the Chrome store and you can also visit our Twitter account for all the updates that you need. So this is me. Thank you, guys. Cheers. Amazing. <clears throat> Thanks, Rajan. Uh, this was awesome. Our very first uh, hack for this whole event is an amazing Web3 wallet. We want to just take a second and bring on the rest of your team. So all of us uh, can thank everybody here who did all the amazing work. So congratulations to all of you. And uh, hopefully all of us get to try this out and uh, use passkeys even more. Congrats. Thank you so much. Thank you, Karthik. All right. Uh, <clears throat> with this, we are ready for our second finalist demo for today. And I'd like to bring on Team Coinu. Welcome. Thank you, uh, Kartik. All right, what's up, everybody? Uh, today, I'm going to be presenting my project for ETH Global Hackathon, Koinu. So first up, a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Rexon, and I'm currently studying grade 11 at Hong Kong International School, and I'm based in Hong Kong. Uh, here's my website over here. So I'm going to ask you guys a question. Have you ever wanted to transact on one blockchain, but you lack the funds on that particular blockchain. So you had to bridge assets from another chain. If that's the case, because that's a pretty common uh, problem in Web3, you need to embrace the hassle that comes with transferring tokens across multiple blockchain networks. And uh, this leads to two pain points in uh, decentralized applications related to cross-chain stuff. First up, you have to face a really bad user wallet experience. Using multiple chains on MetaMask or most crypto wallets is becoming increasingly painful. For example, if you want to check which chain has enough balance so you can transfer the funds from that chain to your desired chain, you need to go on MetaMask, find each chain, and select uh, select the chain, check the balance. And you need to do that for every single chain. And that's pretty bad for the Web3 user experience. And another problem with uh, dApps and cross-chain stuff is bridges. There's a complexity of choosing a good bridge because uh, when you search up, like, some bridge results, it's not really good results. So there's a complexity for newbies. Uh, the quality of most bridges is really good because uh, right now most bridges, you need to do like a captcha and like uh, most of the time it fails or something. And like a lot of these bridges, when you do a transaction, it just keeps loading. And after you keep loading, uh, it just fails. So uh, the quality of most bridges isn't that good. There's not transparency as well. And one big issue with the bridges is the safety of the bridges. As you probably heard, more than $1 billion worth of funds were stolen from bridge-related exploits. So overall, with these two pain points, it's hard for new adopters to Web3 to get onboarded because of the complexity of managing multiple chains and cross-chain experiences. So hence, uh, we need a solution that improves the user experience with cross-chain experiences within Web3 applications. And within that solution, a truly secure way to transfer assets cross-chain. But how do we do that? Introducing Coinu. Coinu is an NPM library built for React, TypeScript, designed with Tailwind CSS, and the uh, contracts are written in Solidity. So uh, what Coinu does is that it solves those pain points that I talked about just now. 
Coin you presents a really good user experience because you can visualize all the chain balances at once without clicking each chain and checking the balance because like you can view the balance over here. Uh, it has secure crossing check technology, which is powered by Axler's general message passing technology. It saves dApp developers time. For example, if I'm a dApp developer and I want to implement some cross-chain solution within my dApp, uh, I don't need to code all that functionality myself. I can just import that library and it's good to go. And allows dApp developers to avoid hindering the user experience for users because they can do all the cross-chain stuff if needed within the dApp so they don't need to switch to a new tab. All right, I'm going to show an example demo of CoinU right now. So here's a, a example dApp that let's say someone has built and this dApp is on demand with testnet. So let's suppose this dApp is like some kind of dApp which allows the user to join some kind of DAO on a uh, Mantle testnet. So the user obviously has first connect the wallet. Uh, I'm not sure why it's not showing the MetaMask. All right, uh, cool. So once they connect the wallet, uh, as you can see, they just have zero AUSDC on Mantle. However, they have 500, they need 500 AUSDC on Mantle to uh, join this arbitrary DAO. So uh, what they do is that this coin new page pops up, coin new renders inside the uh, DAP, and then they have to select the chain which they want to transfer the funds from. So we already can see that we have enough balance on scroll, but we don't have enough balance on Mantle. So therefore we need to transfer from uh, scroll to Mantle. So we need to transfer from scroll to Mantle. Uh, we need to specify the amount that we want to transfer. So let's transfer 500 AUSDC scroll to mantle we need to switch our chain all right so uh my chain is switched Wait, let me stop my screen because i don't know why the metamask isn't showing for some reason All right, so uh, now uh, I think you guys can see the MetaMask screen. Uh, I'm now switched to Scroll Sepolia, and now I'm going to bridge 500 AUSDC from Scroll Sepolia to Mantle Testnet. And this gas fee is given through the Axler's uh, SDK. So I'm going to bridge from Scroll to Mantle. Uh, transaction pops up, prompting me to pay the gas fee to transfer the funds cross chain. I need to confirm. And then meanwhile, uh, the transaction is processing and 500 AUSDC is being sent from scroll to mantle. And that was really fast. Uh, 500 AUSDC has been sent from scroll to mantle. We can view the transaction with Axler Explorer on the Explorer. And as you can see, the gas has been paid and we need to wait for finality. So essentially, uh, we can call it as a success that 500 AUSDC has been sent from scroll to mantle. So this is just one example that CoinU can be used in the DAP. However, uh, I have a plot twist. Uh, due to the limitations of the time that I had in the hackathon, uh, I didn't have time to formally uh, publish it as an NPM library. However, uh, once it's published as an NPM library, uh, what anyone can do is that they just need to install the library into their project. Uh, they need to uh, import the library into uh, into their uh, project. And after they import the library, they can just use the library in their uh, HTML and they just need to pass in a signer over here. So like that, it's really easy to get onboarded with CoinU. And uh, that's it for my presentation. Thank you very much. Awesome. Well, thank you for uh, this amazing demo and uh, building something super cool. I'm, I'm glad that you're uh, getting in all of this super early. This is amazing. Yeah, and I will get to try this out soon. All right. Um, thank you. With this, we're ready for our third Finalist demo for today. Let's welcome Cosmic Cowboys. All right. Thank you so much, Kartik. Uh, so we're Team Pinata, and this is our project, Cosmic Cowboys. So our team is made up of myself. I'm a full stack developer, Steve. And we also have Justin, another full stack developer, and Marge, our designer. So Cosmic Cowboys is a dynamic on-chain game that utilizes AI, NFTs, and ERC-6551 to create a unique experience where NPCs can fill a game world. 
most of the time when you're going into a game world, it can be kind of lifeless or there's not a lot of people there. And so the goal of this is to demonstrate how you can combine these things to create a very dynamic and on-chain world where these NPCs can make actions themselves. So in this game, you can actually influence these NPCs to make on-chain decisions. But there's also a job running once an hour where it pushes them to create, make a decision based on certain uh, facets like where they are, what their balance is, all these different things. So the way the game is made up is that we have a op, uh, every NPC is an ERC 721 NFT with a little bit of altered state. So they have on-chain state for location and health. There's also unique metadata tied to each of these characters. And this serves as their DNA or who they are and their personality. And that's stored on IPFS and linked to the NFT. We also have every NPC getting an ERC 6551 token bound account. And this allows them to have items such as supplies, food, and credits, which they can use in the game. All this is put under one big operator contract, which allows us to do uh, on-chain logic and do game logic with these characters. So with that, let's go ahead and go into the demo. So when you go to cosmiccowboys.cloud, you can see the game here. And when you click connect, it's going to use the safe wallet abstraction. So if you wanted to, you can sign in with a Web2 or a Web3 login. We're just going to use MetaMask. And when you're putting into the game, you're going to see multiple different characters here. And you're going to see things like their backstory, uh, vital, such as health, food, supplies, and credits. What's really unique about uh, these three right here is that these are all things owned by the token bound account. These are things the NFT actually owns. So you can actually go to tokenbound.org and actually see these characters with their items, such as their supplies, food, and their credits, which is an ERC20 token. If we go to the map here, we'll see where all these different characters are and where they are location wise will actually dictate what they can do in the game. So you can have them visit the bar, the home, or the supply depot. And so if you're at the supply depot, you can buy items, sell items, go on supply missions, all sorts of really interesting stuff. Uh, we also have a leaderboard that dictates who's on top based on their number of credits. And you can see all the different token IDs and their token bound accounts here. If we go back to the dashboard and actually engage with one of these characters, it's going to bring up a, a signature request here. And this is with XMTP. So what's happening here is that you as the end user are actually creating a encrypted wallet to wallet messaging between your wallet and the NPC. So we're going to go ahead and sign this and it's going to retrieve our previous message history. And so from here, I can go ahead and say hi to Jax. Hey Jax, can you read me? What this is going to do is send a message through OpenAI, just like most other chatbots, and OpenAI is going to use that unique metadata that we generated to give them personality and give them um, their lifelikeness. And so you can see here, loud and clear, partner, what can I do for you? So let's see if we can influence him to do something. He had a lot of supplies, and he's at the supply depot, so maybe we can get him to sell something. And say, hey, you have a lot of supplies, maybe you should sell some. Now, what is interesting is that these are AI, and so sometimes they'll take that hint and say, you know what, that's a good idea, and it'll trigger an on-chain action. Or like just now, uh, he has his own mind. He says, that's a nice suggestion, but I'm not actually going to do it. So let's see if we can actually push it through. We'll be a little bit more direct and just say, sell supplies. And with this, we have OpenAI set up to do function calls, so it can actually trigger an on-chain action using their token-bound account. And so he just made the action to do a sell supplies. So he's going to sell some supplies for some credits. And we can go back to that token bound account and go to the block explorer. And we can actually see this transaction we just engaged 14 seconds ago. It's still pending. And you can see all the other transactions he's made. And just a reminder, uh, the have a cron job that's running is constantly pushing them once an hour to make an action. So even while you're gone, these NPCs are living, breathing, and making on-chain decisions and changing the dynamic of the game, even if you're not playing. And so that is our project. So thank you so much for watching. Again, the purpose of this project was to demonstrate the power of ERC 6551, NFTs, and AI to create a very dynamic game world that has life thanks to NPCs. Thank you so much for watching. Amazing. This was a super cool. I feel like we're just getting to see what
autonomous uh, objects would look like on on chain. So uh, this was really good to see, and uh, congratulations. Thank you, Kartik. Appreciate it. All right. Next up, we are ready for Cryptopolis. Oh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Danilo. This is my project, Cryptopolis, bringing the city simulator that started it all to the crypto era. So here's a brief history of city building games. This is, is, is Cities of Skyline 2, and I'm going back in time to the original game that started it all in 1989, Sin City Classic. The open, and the code for the original game was open sourced in 2008. It was a C code, and that's what I used for my project. So how the game economics work? So basically, the city starts with a budget, and then you start building your city, infrastructure, residential zones, roads, and so on. And once in a year, you get money back from your citizens uh, uh, by, by taxes, right? So how do I introduce crypto in the, in the game? So basically, the game economy is backed by a ERC-20 token. So you, you, you bridge a token from the layer one into the game. And then you build the city, invest this amount of tokens, and then to, you start building the city, you're spending your, your, your budget. Every time you build something, some tokens move from the in-game wallet to a people wallet. And every time the citizens pay you taxes, you uh, transfer money back from the people to the game, right? So this is one example for, uh, I'm building an industry zone for a hundred dollars and I'm, I have some, some taxes year end and I, do the balance between uh, before and after the game simulation runs, right? So how did I build the game? Uh, the first step was to take the original code and build it to the RISC-V architecture and run inside the Cartesian machine. The Cartesian machine is a verifiable machine, so I can run like a real economy uh, on top of it. So the second step was to build a, the D app. So the D app manages all all the wallets, all the funds, and run the game simulation. And the third step was to build the game UI from scratch. And I'm showing you a demo right now. So you start by choosing your map, right? Uh, this is the original artwork, by the way. So you start by building a city, investing 20,000 tokens. And then you start by, uh, let me place uh, coal power first. And then I place like a industry zone right next to the coal power. And I will place like a residential zone And then I'll place a commercial zone. Up here, you, you can see the budget of the city. And you can see that it already starts to grow some houses in the residential zone. So I can start building roads. And the population starts growing. You can see the population up here, 160 people. And here's the in-game clock. So basically, that's how it works. Uh, the cool thing is I used a code that was written 34 years ago, right? And introduced crypto to the game. As future improvements, I need to actually run the game inside the browser, not only on the server. So I, we have a more real-time view of, of the game. And of course, I need to implement a bunch of other features of the game to honor the original game. That's it. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Daniel. This was great. I mean, being able to actually just port in at the economics here from a 
uh, an open source project from uh, 20 years ago, or actually longer, 40 years ago, is uh, is incredible. So uh, hopefully this kind of creates a whole new wave of people porting in all the other games from the past and making a retro crypto arcade. This is great. Thank you. Thanks. All right, we are almost halfway there. So let's get ready for our next demo, and that is Shop Connect. Welcome. Hello, everyone. We are Team Shop Connect, and we are building personalized consumer experiences powered by Web3. Now, according to McKinsey, 76% of consumers today are demanding personalized experiences, and this market is valued at over a trillion dollars. However, the current problem with creating this in Web2 is that oftentimes, businesses do not talk to one another. And when they do, it's through platforms like Facebook or Google, which ultimately owns all of your data. As for the end user, there's often a trade-off between more personalization and less data privacy. So to tackle these problems, we've come up with a solution called Shop Connect, utilizing Polygon ID to issue verifiable credentials as a proof of purchase whenever you buy something online. Now, these verifiable credentials are not stored on chain, but stored securely and privately in your Shop Connect wallet. And then you can verify ownership using zero knowledge proofs. So this is a little abstract, but let's take a look at a demo involving two individual stores that do not talk to each other. So here we have the first store as a coffee supply store. Let's go ahead and check out the premium espresso coffee maker. So add to cart, check out and complete our purchase. So it's taking a little while because it's actually issuing a verifiable credential as your proof of purchase on the back end. Right. And here we have the post purchase site where there's a nice claim button generated by the Shop Connect plugin, which is installed on the back end of every store that wants to use Shop Connect. So let's go ahead and click claim and it pops up this shop connect extension window. So it says that the site wants to issue a proof of your purchase, the premium coffee maker we just bought. So just for this demo, we've included a little UI toggle over here. So if you click into it, you can see what's going on under the hood. So it's actually a Polygon ID verifiable credential that we are receiving. So let's go ahead and click claim. And it takes a while because the issuer note that we've hosted is actually issuing this verifiable credential directly into our Shop Connect wallet. So just to confirm, we can refresh the Mumbai testnet and see that this verifiable credential was issued 41 seconds ago. This is from our issuer node. Now let's go on to the second store, which is our Coffee Beans store. So even though the two stores look visually similar, just want to remind you that these two stores do not communicate and the store doesn't know anything about you, doesn't know what you've bought or what's in your wallet, right? So we can open the Shop Connect extension again here, and we can see that there's a nice, exclusive, personalized 20% off the premium coffee beans. So given that the store knows nothing about you, how is this possible? So what's actually going on is that the extension fetches a list of promotions from the store and then filters it based on the uh, verifiable credentials you have in your wallet. So all of this filtering is done internally. So the data is shown only to the extension and to yourself and is not exposed to the store at all. So if we click on this deal, we can see that the requirement is to have purchased a premium brand coffee machine, which we just did in store number one. And so over here again, you can see under the hood is actually a verifiable credential with a custom e-commerce schema. So let's go ahead and apply the, the promotion. So again, it takes a little while because what we're actually doing is the extension is generating a zero knowledge proof of our ownership of this verifiable credential. This proof is then sent to our store's backend. And if the proof is legitimate, the store then applies the discount to the corresponding products, as you can see over here. So going back to the presentation, this is a massive win-win for both the merchant and the shopper. For the merchant, they get to offer personalized experiences and convert their ideal customers. As for shoppers, they get to have a personalized promotions and rewards and also keep their data private and intact. So this is our technical architecture. We'd like to bring your attention to the four main things here, which are the browser extension, the online store, the Shop Connect plugin, and the Shop Connect API. In the browser extension, it essentially wraps up our Polygon ID SDK. It is where the ZK proofs are generated and we've also abstracted away a lot of the Web3 UX into a more e-commerce friendly uh, interface. Right? Then we have the Shop Connect plugin, 
which links the extension and the API together. The API is then linked to our self-hosted Polygon ID issuer node, which is the one that's issuing the verifiable credentials as a proof of purchase. So this is the team. Um, we've worked very hard over the past two weeks. So all credits go to Dennis, Rafa, Ben, Leonardo, and me, Junyu. Thank you very much for your time and have a nice day. Awesome. Congratulations. And uh, that was a really cool demo, being able to actually benefit off of your on-chain history. Or actually, just representing a lot of that on-chain is uh, it's going to be a massive unlock. So hopefully, uh, this becomes a really nice Shopify plugin for all of us. <laughs> Amazing. All right. Next up, we are ready for Sherlock. So let's welcome the Sherlock team on stage. Uh, welcome everyone. Introducing Sherlock, which is an FHE based privacy enabling infrastructure for EVM blockchains. So, starting with the problem statement everything is blockchain is public by design, which leads to many problems. Like anyone can spy on your wallets, can see the wallet and on chain active keys as the transaction data is public. Search and can extract MEV out of your transactions. On-chain data exposures leads to multiple risk of scams, attacks, and certain other things. So what's the solution for all these issues? We built Sherlock, which is basically an FHE-based infrastructure to enable developers to build privacy-preserving dApps on EVM chains. Sherlock infrastructures unfolds multiple use cases. A Sherlock enables users to have ME-free transactions, encrypted transfers, Encrypted TIDs, confidential voting, blind auction, on chain games, on chain privacy preserving games. Regarding MEV free transactions, as now all the transaction data is encrypted, searchers can no longer make sense out of your transaction data and can't accept MEV out of it. Similar things go to encrypted transfers. The actual balances would be withhold, the, the actual balances would be available only at the senders and the receivers, right? Rest middleman would be able to see only the encrypted data, not the actual balance. So let's understand the architecture behind Sherlock infrastructure. So basically, with this infrastructure, you can deploy any privacy preserving DAP on chain. So for the demo, for the for the CT online demo, basically I deployed an encrypted ERC20 contract, which enables users to perform encrypted transfers and have their balances on chain in the encrypted manner. So let's understand this architecture a bit. So there are three major components in this architecture. One is network of nodes, one is Ponzi ZK EVM, another is Sherlock SDK. So whenever a user wants to perform a transfer transaction, let's say, so all the data related to that particular transfer transaction first get encrypted from the network of node. The SDK receives the ciphered transaction data. Then the SDK makes the actual transaction call on chain with this particular encrypted data. Now, as the transfer transaction is happening with the, on the encrypted data, all the data available on chain is again encrypted. Now you might ask, like, uh, if this data is encrypted, now how this particular contract would be able to perform addition and subtraction operation in a consistent manner over user balances? So basically, our ERC-20 contract, which I have deployed, leverages the Bonsai GQVM infrastructure, where we implemented our own fully homomorphic encryption functions for updating balances, so reduce subtracting balances. So basically, contract calls the ZKV infrastructure for computing the computing computing over the encrypted balances of chain. The infrastructure returns output and proof. Once we get the output, we update the state. Once it is state is updated, user can query its balance using the SDK. It will receive the balance in the ciphered form. To get the balance in the actual plain text, user need to basically pass on the balance to the network of node. I need to prove ownership over that particular balance out a particular cipher text and yeah and once the network of node was able to kind of like prove that get able to verify that the user is actually the owner then it decrypts it and return is back to the user in the plain text form now let's understand this use case like from the demo itself so basically here we have two users alice and bob alice wants to send some encrypted number alice want to send some tokens to from his wallet to bob wallet but alice won't want to like show the world how much actually she is transferring the number of tokens. So basically, I deployed my own encrypted ERC-20 contract with the infrastructure. So currently, Alice holds this chipperish balance. And none other than Alice would be able to know how much this balance is. If Alice wants to know how much this balance actually means, he can click, she can click on decrypt, 
if she needs to sign this particular message claiming the ownership over this address and yeah we can see like similarly alice has four token and similar sim same same thing goes with bob if bob needs to see he needs to prove the ownership and yeah bob has around six token so let's just hide the balances and perform an encrypted transfer so let's just copy bob's address this is bob's address let's transfer one encrypted token so basically i am writing one in the raw form but actually an encrypted version of it would be available on chain let's click on send so as you can see this gibberish number is getting transferred and this gibberish number would be available on chain for the other users to see once i click on confirm let's just wait for the transaction to complete once the transaction would complete we would be able to see the updated balance for bob So the transfer is going on and we can see transfer complete so let's just reload the balance as previously bob has around has around six tokens now let's see what's his updated balance is again it's again a gibberish number we need to decrypt it we can we need to prove ownership and yeah we can see like bob had received one token and now his updated balance is seven so this was the demo for encrypted transfers now let's go over to what are our future aspects we are planning to leverage eigen layer using eigen layer basically we would be allowing the existing trusted validators to become nodes in the network of node for encrypting data similarly we are planning to build an fhe library with this fhe library we would be unfolding a plethora of use cases for developers to build on top of it similarly we are still brainstorming on certain ways to make this whole project compliance friendly to boost mass adoption thank you thank you everybody for organizing such a great hackathon and yeah if if you want to connect us sir these are our twitter handles awesome congratulations for that demo and uh, being able to see a fully homomorphic encryption live demo is uh it's kind of awesome so uh i'm glad that uh, you were able to make it work and uh actually hide things in plain sight this is this is great thanks thanks Ken. congrats all right a few more teams to go so let's welcome our next project demo evm plus Welcome. Hi, my name is Imi. Uh, my project is EVM Plus, which is an EIP number 7543, which adds decimal float opcodes to the EVM, arithmetic, exponential, log, and sign. A decimal is defined as C times 10 to the power of Q, where C and Q are integers from the stack. If you have a opcode, for example, the D1 negate opcode and some value C and Q, then the EVM plus would return you the answer in the same format. We can do this because the EVM is a virtual machine. There are no hardware restrictions. We should do this because devs are humans, mostly. And humans love decimals. And we do not need to do more than this because exponentials, log, and sine combined with each other and arithmetic give us all elementary functions, including polynomials, trigonometry, basically all kinds of functions that numerical code could ever need. The implementation is complete. Gas is calculated precisely depending on user inputs and is currently charged double. We're going to look at a live example. At this address, there is an open and live EVM plus node running against which anyone can transact. I've implemented a Black Shoals smart contract and a Neuron smart contract that I will show you. A Neuron takes inputs and has weights for the inputs, takes the weighted sum and then applies an activation function on top. Here, we'll use the sigmoid activation function, which is the inverse of, of 1 plus e to the power of minus x. In Yule smart contract code, this is as simple as negating the input, taking the exponential, adding 1, and inversing the whole thing, 
And these functions are verbatim uses of the new opcodes. We have a control implementation of a neuron. So if we have a neuron with weights 0 0.4 and 0 0.6 and inputs, let's take a random number from our top right game clock. I see a seven. So if we change this to a seven, 0 0.7 and 0 0.3, we expect a 0 0.613, 0 0.4, et cetera. We'll run this in our smart contract. So our input should be a seven times 10 to the minus one and 0 0.3, three times 10 to the minus one. So this is an example I've had, it seems. If we run these concatenated, send them to our node and read the log for output, we get this output, we check that is the correct value to the precision we wanted. That's the coefficient and the exponent is actually a two's complement minus 10. So it's this value times 10 to the minus 10, which is exactly correct. The use cases for this technology are varied, vast. We, for math, science, machine learning, mathematical finance, digital art, games. If the EVM is a calculator, then EVM plus is a scientific calculator. Imagine having sophisticated mathematical algorithms with intelligence or arbitrary algorithms living autonomously on Ethereum without bothering any other functionality that existed, a mere adding of seven decimal opcodes. Thank you. I mean, that was uh, awesome. And uh, thanks for showing a live demo of this thing. Just getting that precision and adding a proper decimal library is uh, it's, it's a game changer. Uh, hopefully we get to see this uh, EIP actually adopted and, and merged into the core get, but honestly, uh, get hacks are my favorite hacks for, for any project because you get to control actually how the whole thing behaves. And this was great. All right, four more demos to go. So let's welcome our next project, Bear Bonds. Hi, do you guys see my screen? Everything is great. Awesome, cool. Uh, let me start the slideshow. Hey everyone, we are Bear Bonds. Um, we, uh, it's created by myself, Beans, and Roush P, and Roush P uh, who prefer to stay anonymous. So essentially, Bear Bonds are an ETH's Maxi's favorite bond during the bear market. How this essentially works is that somebody can come in and bond 10 ETH into the Bear Bonds contract, which is, 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 which is essentially an ERC-4626 contract. And it takes that ETH and converts it into Steeth, and that Steeth continuously yields in the vault. In return, the user gets a bond NFT, or essentially an NFT that represents their position in the pool. From there, the user has two choices. They can either decide to early exit their bond, meaning they forfeit their bond. They can get their principal back, meaning no loss to the user, but that yield gets distributed back to everybody else that currently has an open bond. Or what the user can do is wait for the bond to, uh, to mature. And what that means is... The bond matures when ETH hits all-time highs. And from there, they can redeem their principal, their yield, and all the other yield they've gotten from early, early forfeiters. So let's go through a demo on Gwirly right now. Currently, this is Bear Bonds. This is completely live on Gwirly, um, Mantle, ZK Scroll, and a few other chains. So this is the homepage. We can see there's currently three uh, ETH of TVL in it. We can see the current ETH price, which is um, currently fetched from the graph. We can see all our bonds that we've that we've opened before. So let's go ahead and create our bond right now. So right now we can see a TVL of one three ETH. Let's create a bond worth one ETH right now. So let's bump up the gas so we don't have to wait for Gwirly to stall. So while that is going, we can actually take a look at the bare bonds contract. Um, so right now we have a pending transaction. That's our current bond. But if we look at previous transactions, we can see that currently this one, we bonded the one ETH and we, in return, we, uh, it got turned into 0.99 staking. 
Um, and we also minted a bear bonds NFT. So uh, if we, uh, Gwerly is a little slow right now. So we'll wait for that transaction to confirm, which I believe it ideally did. Um, the indexing is slow. Okay, we're gonna wait for the uh, Gwerly to confirm that. But right now we can see that these are our current open bonds. Uh, from here, we, what we can do is we can either actually uh, bridge to a different network, or we can bridge to, uh, or we can uh, redeem the bond. Uh, sorry to interrupt, but uh, we are not seeing the screen that you might be on. Oh, can you not see the homepage? No, we're on the Etherscan page right now. Uh, Let, let's try sh uh, screen sharing again, and let's do the whole desktop if we haven't done that. Uh, I did share the whole desktop. Um, let me try again. All right. So entire screen share. Uh, can you see my screen now? Yes, we can. Now it's good. Oh, sorry. Um, what happened is I bonded. We can see the TVL went from three to four because I bonded one ETH and our bond, uh, has been opened. So the reason you're seeing that the current bond value is a bit higher is because it's ETH rebases. Uh, we, we spin up this, uh, the rebasing, uh, timeframe. So this is the current value of the bond, and this is how much we currently redeemed. From here, what we can do is actually uh, redeem the bond early. So we're going to forfeit our yield because we want our principal back. Uh, let's hopefully this one will confirm faster. Um, so while that is confirming, um, we can imagine that ETH has hit all-time highs, and we want to actually redeem and mature a bond. Oh, actually, it indexed pretty fast. So this is what happens when you basically paper hand your ETH. You get this soul-bound NFT that proves that you are a paper-handed ETH betrayer. And uh, the TVL went down because you got your principal back, but every other single bond um, has increased in value because they got that forfeited yield. Um, the other thing we can do is take this bond and bridge it to another network. So these three are uh, powered by Axelar and Gnosis is powered by Hyperlane just because Hyperlane supports Gnosis. And the reason we actually wanna bridge these two different networks is because it's essentially a different form of wrapped staked ETH on these different networks. So we think Omnichain Stake ETH could be pretty powerful, potentially using it as collateral or anything of that nature. So hopefully that will index rather soon. Um, while we wait for that to index, anybody can come here and click this button, which essentially calls out the chain link, um, queries if ETH has passed all time highs. If so, it'll flip a flag in the contract uh, and allow people to redeem their bonds. If we click here right now, we can see that ETH is not at all time highs yet. Um, and the flag is not on, so we cannot redeem our bonds. So we can see that uh, our bridge thing, our bridge transaction went through, and the 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 logo from went from ETH to Mantle, and that's essentially the demo of bear bonds. But we went one step further and made it for ApeCoin. So for all you ApeCoin holders and in the board Ape ecosystem, you can do the exact same thing, but with your ApeCoin. It has the exact same staking mechanics and re uh, as Steeth. Um, so we made it for for both ecosystems. Uh, that's our demo of bear bonds and eight bonds. Awesome. Uh, yeah. You can reach out to me on Twitter, uh, at Xerox Beans. Uh, if you want to talk about it, we might actually launch on a mainnet if we get enough interest. Uh, but yeah, thank you. Well, congratulations on, uh, on that demo. Sorry, we had to go through a minor uh, AV issue there, but it looks like we still got all of it. And uh, being able to do this thing, even on testnet, is a great proof that you can actually make this um, such a good uh, demonstration of uh, having diamond hands now. And uh, congrats. Well, thank you. All right. Three more demos to go. So let's welcome our third last finalist for the day, ZTF. Welcome. Hi. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, CTF here. So we built a decentralized cross-chain and price management protocol. Uh, so our team is from Tradition Lab. We basically build uh, a bunch of protocol and we focus on CK technologies. Before we go further, let me run the code. Uh, we'll explain it later. Okay. Uh, all good. So during the year, uh, that's what had happening. I think we all see loss and you know pain, and I think we 
it should do it better. So I think for me, security is never enough, and we always should try to add even more security into our ecosystem. There are three main areas that we want to work on. First of all, I think the risk is more than just bug. Why a lot of uh, audit and protocol focus on bug? I think we should also try to cover different type of risk and loss. Like sometimes it's economic, right? Um, that's an unforeseeable uh, event that make things happen. And then when those happen, there's loss. And if we can prevent it in a crisis management, sometimes you should react. You have to plan it beforehand and you know make it happen. Uh, also, if it's more decentralized and more composable, it open a avenue for people to like create and make everybody safer. So what we build, uh, I think that's a. This is what the what we focus on. First of all, we want our protocol to have uh, crisis management that from people find issue to be able to pause or uh, do anything with the protocol in like one tier. Uh, we also focus on diamond prevention. As we mentioned that the losses can come from different things than just bug. So we do it in a CTF way. If you haven't heard of it, it's like capture the fact game where there's like a starting position. So it's just a blockchain state. And then uh, there's a frag position where like uh, uh, something happened according to a condition that uh, defined. And a player can try any like sequence of action, any sequence of transaction to try to reach the frag. Frag may be like you successfully like drain a protocol or you simply like move a price too far and so on. Uh, so if you can capture the frag, we have a CK of vulnerabilities. Basically, you prove that this sequence of transaction can move from the first state to the uh, capture state. Uh, you prove this with like CKVM. And you can hide the sequence of transaction, but you can prove that that exists a way to make it happen. So basically, the protocol have vulnerabilities. And we also have a callback system. So when someone claim on a bounty, uh, a callback get call, you can set up a callback to call into your protocol or any road to like help handle the situation. Uh, so basically, the protocol work by uh, you set the flag, you set the environment, someone come move, and then uh send to uh receiver and then send to like bonsai you claim the bounty bounty get call back get call if the uh protocol is also on different chain we also have wormhole integration so you can even call back to cover your protocol on all that you have so i think let's move on to demo so here's the how what the uh our site look like so you can come in and browse different protocol uh different about these. So if you go into one, it will have like all the information about like how the sort code, the node, and all the information about spec. And this is like uh initial state that you can load into your environment. Uh normally it would take a lot of time for a white hat to figure out like what is the the issue with it. On the other hand, if you create right, you just uh wait, wrong one. Okay. So after you see the state, you can copy and paste it. And then you get a bunch of TX that you think it would like work to like change the state to capture. Uh, and then you run this command that I run like when I first present. And let's see, less than like the time that it takes to talk, it's generate a proof that okay, this sequence of transition can attack the, the protocol. So now you can come back and hit uh, fill in the information, or you can just like call it from your command line. Uh, then you hit uh, capture the flag claim. Uh, you can view on Explorer. This might take some time, but like if you look at like order transaction, uh, twenty two okay, twenty two hours ago. Uh, so you can capture the flag, uh, and then the callback get call. So we also have this uh, callback target that we put up as a test. So this one get get call and then it hit like it it just like get saved. So in practice it should be like you know pause for a call pull money and do different thing. Yep. That all we have here. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so this was great. Being able to actually leverage more proofs around finding vulnerabilities is a is a great thing. So congratulations. Thank you. All right, two more demos to go. So let's welcome our second last finalist for the day, ZKBRF. 
Kevin and Serge. Marco, welcome. So, hey. I just take it away. Nice. Hi. Hey, if online, and welcome to the introduction of ZKVRF, um, a novel ZKP enabled method to generate provably fair and verifiably random numbers. So as you know, verifiable randomness um, is required by decentralized application on Ethereum like NFT mints, raffles, sweepstakes, lotteries, and games. And the secure randomness um, is required to, yeah, for the, to make sure the contracts are fair. What are the properties of a secure randomness source, you may ask? Those are unpredictability, unbiasability, verifiability, and guaranteed uh, liveness. The state-of-the-art randomness services have um, different trade-offs between availability, cost, biasability, and uh, liveness. Uh, with our ZK VRF approach, we showcase the power of programmable cryptography enabled by modern ZK SNARK tooling, in this case Noir, to create a custom deterministic public key cryptography scheme. With ZK VRF, uh, everyone with a web browser can access um, and then generate verifiably random numbers. And this is what's so special about it. We're tackling the availability here. And it's available on any EVM network that supports EC precompiles. So you can think about Optimism, OP stack based chains like Base, etc. So the way we derive randomness is like so. This is how we differ from Chainlink VRF mainly, by the way. Um, we use the formula in the middle here, which is an HBAC construction of an operator's private key um, and then concatenated with uh, the message hash, which consists of the block hash and a nonce. And then the final randomness is these, this formula at the bottom here, which is uh, the catch act of that final deterministic signature. So if you want to use ZKVRF, the request flow goes like this. If you're a user, you can deploy a consumer contract that requests a random number to our ZKVRF contract, which emits an on-chain event randomness requested, which is then indexed off-chain by a subgraph. Now, an operator can use our explorer, which I'll show later, um, to query the subgraph and then look at any outstanding randomness requests. Now, they can fulfill those requests uh, using the front end, which can generate uh, a ZKVRF signature with a proof uh, using WASM. And then at that point, they can submit that transaction to the ZKVRF contract, which then is verified on chain with the Ultra Plant verifier. And now we'll show you a demo. So if we go here, this is on scroll mainnet, by the way. Um, this is the operator view. Um, this is not the operator, this is the operator view. Um, so you can see that my public key as an operator is 0x29EC. And then if we switch back, um, we've created a UI to show an example of how you can make a request. If, we, if I select myself as an operator, just for this example, um, and then I try to request a random number and send the transaction. So we wait for the transaction to go through. Um, might take a while because it's on scroll mainnet. It's a bit slow. Um, if we go back to our operator view as an operator, it might take a while to um, index this. Uh, subgraph sometimes takes a while. But if we keep refreshing, there it is. That's the request I just made. I can fulfill it. So this calculates the ZK proof. It takes about 10 seconds. Um, and once that's done, I can send the transaction to fulfill the randomness request as an operator. And then I, now if we go back to the view of being a requester, let's see, this is, uh, there we go. It's fulfilled. So you can see that this is the random number uh, that we got from the uh, VRF request. And we can actually also check it um, on chain, on scroll scan here, and we can look at the logs and you can see the randomness here. So what can you do with this randomness? Well, you can do uh, a raffles with it. You can do NFT reveals. You can do gaming mechanics, uh, basically anything you want to do um, that requires uh, on-chain randomness. Uh, and this is live on scroll mainnet right now. But the cool thing about this is that you can take our code and deploy it on any rollup, uh, any new rollup that you want uh, where you need this randomness. Back to the presentation. Yes, and for the next steps, our roadmap basically yeah, is a prover node and a deployment on multiple rollups and networks. And of course, the big vision is to a fully permissionless marketplace for VRF and it's basically also makes this project so interesting having this uh, as a goal. Our team are Kevin, Marco, Roshan, and me, Serge. And if you have any questions about verifiable randomness on ZKVRF, contact us on Twitter or visit our homepage at zkvrf.com. Thank you.
ZQER team, congratulations on not only just doing an amazing demo, but actually making this uh, available on mainnet. This is uh, it's gonna be a game changer. Awesome. Pleasure. Well, congratulations. And with this, we are ready for our final finalist demo for the day. So please welcome team number 11, Pat. Dimitri, whenever you're ready. Hey, thank you. Hey, everyone. Um, we are PACT, and we're excited to present you our project. So PACTs are actually NFTs with a twist. Namely, they have their own accounts. So this means that each pack is not just a collectible, but a mini wallet that is filled with digital assets. It's like a digital goodie bag that you can send to anyone and anywhere with a simple link. And the best part, the recipient doesn't need to worry about paying for gas fees or funding a wallet first just to open the pack. The pack pays for its own unpacking. So how does it work? First, create a pack and add assets to it, like tokens, NFTs, and some ETH for gas. Then you will receive a link that you can share. And with that link, the receiver can open the pack, no ETH required. But rather than telling, let me actually show you how it works. So this is the application, and I will connect my wallet. So you can see I already have a few packs created just for testing purposes, and I'm connected to a scroll Sepolia. Let's create a new pack. So first, I will say I want to add 0 0.1 ETH, and I want to add also this mock token um, that we created. All right, so that is my pack that I want to create. Um, next step, I need to approve the token to be spendable by the contract. So let's do this first. Should be any minute confirmed. Next up, I need to sign a message. So this is important because this message will be actually used for the uh, as a seed phrase, as a seed for the claiming key. So let's sign a message. And this is the review. So now we can just send a transaction and create the pack. I'll open the block explorer as well. And there you go. The pack is created. And if we look at scroll scan, we can see that the pack was created, 0.1 ETH was transferred, and our mock tokens into this newly created account. And this account is actually owned by the NFT itself, as you can see. So now I have this link. What can I do with this link? So I can send it, for example, to someone like this. But in this case, let's just claim, claim it right away. Um, and I'm going to actually also create a completely fresh wallet. So let us me add a new account. You can see it's completely empty. And of course, I need to connect it here as well. So this is the pack. You can see this claim link actually um, opened the pack. And we can see already what is inside. We connected our wallet already, which is this completely fresh one that I just created. Next, we need to sign a message. So this is to prevent front running and to make sure that actually it arrives at our address as well. And next up, I can confirm the claim. And in this case, I don't need to sign any transaction anymore because when I press this button, the transaction will be sent through the relayer. So that's it. It's sending to the relayer. And in a few seconds, we should see the hash. And we have been unpacked. If I open my wallet, you can see I have the ETH. And if I observe the transaction, you can see it has been unpacked into our wallet. So yeah, PAX is a tool. Um, it gives users choice and protocols on how to share assets in the Web3 space, bringing more real-life use cases into the on-chain world. Like imagine sending assets or NFTs with a simple link through instant messages, DMs, emails, send your newsletter readers an NFT, you don't need to ask every single one of them for the address. Just send packs. On-chain gift cards, on-chain loot boxes for games. What about on-chain merch? At conferences, give away some packs so your users can get right into trying out your new app or ecosystem. And for new users, packs can make the onboarding process simple. If I want to onboard someone, I would just create onboarding packs with all the necessities that one might need to start exploring the ecosystem. Now to the tech. Essentially, we're using three components, smart contracts, the front end, and the real layer. We've built packs using ERC721s, so they're standard NFTs, but they own accounts thanks to the new standard ERC6551. The contracts are modular, currently supporting NFTs and tokens to be packed up. 
but more use cases and logic can be added in the future, for instance, on what should happen on packing or claiming. The front end is built with Next.js, and the relayer is a simple API server with a wallet that connects to an RPC and is responsible for claiming the pack on behalf of the user. And so far, we have deployed on Polygon ZK EVM testnet, scroll Sepolia, and Mantle testnet as part of this hackathon. So this is packed. Share what Web3 has to offer, onboard someone new, one pack at a time. Thank you. Awesome. This is such a cool way to get everybody else who's uh, not even onboarded yet to uh, just receive some crypto and uh, or any gift of any kind. This is uh, this is amazing. Hopefully, we all get to see this uh, live. Yeah, exactly. Share the love. Share a pack. Perfect. Well, Dimitri, congratulations, and that concludes our eleven finalists for ETH Online 2023. I want to give all of them a big round of applause again. So please join me in thanking ZKVRF, Sherlock, Cryptopolis, EVM Plus, Cosmic Cowboys, Coinu, Pact, Shop Connect, WalletX, ZTF, and Bear Bonds. Now let's get to all the good stuff, which is First, I guess you can see all of the projects on uh, on showcase uh, page on our website. You can check out every single one of these demos, including the, the, the videos and see their source code. But what I was trying to get to was the prizes. Uh, there's a lot of prizes being given out for this hackathon. And and all of you have been patiently waiting to find out who won what prizes. So let's get started. We're going to give away $225,000 prizes today in the next 15 minutes. So let's get the show going. First up is Scroll. The best use of Scroll goes to ZK Email Safe, SC Bridge Account, and Pin Dependent. All three of these teams are going to be winning $2,000. So congratulations. Then Kindred, ZK VRF, Caravan, Gasly, ZK LC, Chain Guard, Lit Tornado, Sherlock, Clubcast, and Locker Room are the best use of Scroll winners as second place. And each of these 10 teams is going to be taking home $1,000. And the craziest one of all is the pool prize. 223 teams are going to be splitting the pool prize. So everybody listed here and here and potentially here is going to be splitting $4,000 amongst evenly themselves. So that's a lot of winners. And that was a hard one for the school team, I bet. There's a fourth slide. So there's a lot of projects here. Congratulations to all of you for deploying something on scroll. Next up, we have Spark. So best use of conduit goes to Chaser, and you're going to be taking home $4,000. And LP Conduit is going to be the second place $2,000 recipient. The best use of SDI category winners are Crypto VC for $4,000, Protec for $2,000, Omni SDI for $1,000, and the runner-up Leverage SDI for $500. So congratulations to four of these teams. The best use of Sparkland category winners are Spark Delta Prime for $4,000, Block T5 for $2,000, and BY's third place $500 winner. Congratulations. Then we have Mask. The most refined hack leveraging Mask is DHive, and you're going to be taking home $2,000. And the most creative application is Space Command, and you're also going to be winning $2,000. The most ambitious project using Mass Network is Crypto Post for $2,000, and Cabal Sorel is going to be the most innovative app, social uh, social app, for $1,000. Next up, Polygon. What's up, Wallet and SC Bridge account are going to be the best public good with account abstraction winners, and they're each going to be taking in $1,250 each. And the best use of Polygon ID winners are Shop Connect and Trigon, and you're going to be receiving. 1250 each as well. So congratulations. The best use of ZK EVM will go to these five teams, Chainguard, Onboarder, Zeppelin Finance, Laputa, and Sherlock, and you're going to be receiving $500 each. And the best LXLY bridge ZK EVM extension goes to Nexus Network, and you're going to be taking home $2,500. Next, we have SAFE. The best use of SAFE core protocol winners are Safe Street for $2,500, Safe Lock for $1,500 and Auto Swapper for $1,000 third place winner. The best use of Safe Core for account abstraction category goes to Dripit for $2,500, Axioms for $1,500, and Discovery for third place $1,000. Next up, UMA. The best use of UMA goes to Chaser for $5,000, and Chain Guard 
will be the second place $2,000 winner. And 22 teams are going to be splitting the pool prize of $3,000. So congratulations to all 22 of these teams here for winning the Umay integration prize. Then we have Filecoin. The grand prize winners for Filecoin are Kamu Lilypad, Dap Hack, and ETH Maintenance. You're each going to be taking home $2,500. And the runner-ups are Facilitation Station and Clovers and you're each going to be receiving $1,000. Then we have Hyperlane. Hypercompute is the best use of Hyperlane and you're gonna be winning $3,000. And the two interchain app winners are ZKP Hype for first place, $2,000, and Vana Engine for second place, $1,000. Congratulations. The best use of Warp Routes goes to Banker Smith for $2,000 and the best new ISMs Category winner is Hyperlane Autopilot for $2,000. Then we have Mantle, and the best DeFi hack on Mantle goes to Bear Bonds for $1,250 and payments for $1,250 as well. So, congratulations. The best NFT or gaming hack category winners are Laputa and Deadman Switch, and you're each going to be taking in $1,250. The best UX goes to Coinu and show up and you are also going to be receiving $1,250 each. And these 37 teams are going to be taking home the pool prize and splitting $2,500 amongst themselves equally. Then we have ApeCoin. The best consumer use case goes to Perks for $3,000 and Unscripted for second place $2,000. And the most innovative apps are Split Pay for $3,000 and any ape for $2,000. Next up is Wormhole. ZTF is the best use of Wormhole Automatic Relayers category winner. You're gonna be taking home $6,000. And Chain Guard is going to be receiving the $3,000 second place prize. And Tic Tac Chain is the third place $1,000 recipient for best Wormhole Relayer category prize. Next up, we have Axelar. The best use of Axelar GMP goes to Bear Bonds for $3,000. Protect is the second place $1,500 recipient. And Super Wallet will be the third place $500 winner. So congratulations. Next up is Sysmo. The best use of Sysmo Connect goes to Zuko for $2,500. Congratulations. The best reputation-based service on Sysmo is going to be Axioms for $1,000. The best Privacy category winner on Sysmo is Chain Guard for $1,000 as well. And the most creative use of Sysmo goes to Dino for $500. Then we have the Compound Grants Program. Compensator is the best use of Compound Protocol, and you're going to be taking home $5,000. Then we have Connext. The best use of Connext goes to Gasly, and you're going to be taking home $1,500. Next up is the Graph. And the best use of Graph goes to Refik for $1,000, Shout Protocol for $600, and Dashbit for $400. So congratulations to both, all three of these teams. The best new subgraph or substream category winners are ShowUp for $1,400, Enigma for $1,000, and CareerZen for $600, third place winners. So congratulations. The best cross-chain app Oh, we, we have uh, an error on our slides. We mixed the order. So the best cross-chain app goes to GoForRouter for Connects for $1,000, and best abstracted UX goes to Way to Pay for $1,000. Then we have XMTP. The best use of XMTP goes to Dino for $250, and Token Tutor for $150, and Fly Direct and Dino are also going to be taking in $100 each. The best use of encryption and messaging Winner is DexTech for $1,500. The best use of messaging to onboard people on XMTP is Cosmic Cowboys for $1,500. And Onboarder is the best notification bridge for $1,500. Then we have Lit. Frit is the best use of claimable keys and Onboarder as well. And both of these teams are going to be receiving $1,000. Lit Tornado and Spiderweb are the best programmatic signing apps and they're both going to be taking in $1,000 each. The two wildcard category winners are One Click Dap and All Hail Hates, and you're all each also going to be receiving $1,000.
Then we have Chainlink. Any Ape and Chaser are the best use of CCIP functions, and you're both going to be receiving $1,500. And then Recara Pay and GRP are the Build Something Awesome category winners, and you're each going to be receiving $1,000. Then we have Push Protocol. Best all around application on push is ICE alerts, and you're going to be taking home $2,000. GBP is the best hack using conditional gating, and you're going to be receiving $1,800. ETHLINE is the most creative use case for push, and you're going to be taking home $1,200. Then we have Tableland. The best use of Tableland Studio goes to Zuko for $1,000. VibeCheck takes in second place $700, and Dino and Web3 Agent are going to be receiving $300 each. So congratulations to all four of these teams. The best use of Table and Basin winners are Wallet Pass, Token Tutor, and Gov GovChain Board, and you're each going to be taking home $233. And 20 teams are going to be taking $100 each by splitting the $2,000 pool prize. So congratulations to all 20 of these teams here. Next up is Aztec. Billion ZK voters is the best use of Noir, so you're going to be receiving $2,000. Noir LSP doc symbols is the best dev tool winner for $2,000. And Aztec graphics is the best sandbox dap, and you're going to be taking home $1,000. Oh. Then we have the Uniswap Foundation. So the best use of Uniswap V4 hook goes to perks, delegated liquidity, and hook finance. And each of you are going to be taking home $1,666. Next up is Cometh. AI education is the best UX on Cometh, and you're going to be taking home $3,000. The best mobile app is going to be Sengly for $1,000, and Laputa is the most original application winner, and you're going to be receiving $1,000. Those were all of our winners and all of our prizes. You can check out everything now on your showcase profile, which means you'll be seeing which prizes you've won as a team, and they will also be appearing on your dashboards. And just a quick note for everybody who uh, is going to be receiving some prize, everything that we announced here is tentative and not final, which means that over the next few weeks, we're going to be verifying everybody's source code and code base is making sure that nobody cheated and everybody followed the rules. And all that will be finalized and locked in in the next three weeks. And then all the prizes will be distributed, including your stake returns on November 24th. So that's the deadline from here. So everything from three to four weeks is what's going to be the final time where you get to hear back on all of your prizes. So those were all the amazing prizes and we kind of saw all the, the 11 finalists. So before we wrap this up and get started with our summit, I wanna take a, a quick second to thank you and thank a lot of people that make this event possible. I want to start off with all these amazing groups listed here. But before that, I want to thank all of you hackers. This is our biggest event ever. There's 2,000 plus people that participated from about 100 countries. And it was amazing for us to see this much excitement, enjoyment, and energy over the past three weeks to really make this amazing. And I want to thank all of you for taking the time and building something that you were personally excited about. I also want to thank all of our amazing judges for taking the time to talk to all of these teams live and give them feedback and ask them questions about their projects and help us really look at everything that came out of this event in a very, very short amount of time. I also want to thank all of our mentors and volunteers who kind of did so much work behind the scenes to make sure that this event across 20 different time zones stays and runs smoothly, whether it's from synchronous pieces or asynchronous pieces of this, this uh, event. Everything is thanks to everybody listed here. I also want to give a massive shout out to all of our speakers, which is our summit speakers, our workshop speakers, and everybody who shared incredible knowledge about what they are excited about in this space and how you think about what's going to be exciting, whether it's a theme or something technical, or simply just getting feedback on what's happening right now. And this is going to be a massive slide with all of our amazing partners, so many people work behind the scenes for every single protocol in this space to make this event possible. And I want to thank all of them here. 
And last but not least, I want to give a massive shout out to the rest of the global team, Vince, Vikram, George, Wilbur, Maggie, Nuno, Fred, Polly, Rory, Wichi, Minnie, Anna, Moaz, Emily, Andrew, and Jacob. That's the team that runs everything behind the scenes to make sure that you have the best experience across the world, whether it's in person or asynchronously. And I want to make sure that they get the recognition that they deserve. Those were all the thank yous. So let's go back to our 11 finalists. We saw 11 teams here and we call them our finalists, but if this is your first time attending a Need Global event, uh, you may not know this, but we make sure that our hackathons are not designed to be competitions. The goal here is to get people excited about what's happening in Web3. And as a result, what we prioritize is giving people the opportunity to showcase something that they're passionate about. And instead of having first, second and third, we kind of stop at the finalist level. And that means everybody who presented here today, all those 11 teams officially came in first. So in addition to any that they may have won from any of our partners, each team member from each of those teams was, will also be receiving 500 USDC per member from the global side as a thank you for building something absolutely incredible over the course of this month. But that's not all. We're gonna actually do a lot more than just 500 USDC. So every team member, We'll also be receiving 10 Sepulia ETH to make testing everything on staging and test nets way easier for all of you. Uh, we're also going to be giving an ENS domain to every single person from each of those 11 teams. If you are coming to any of our Pragma events in person this year, you get a automatic entry and you have to buy that ticket. If you are interested in getting a wallet and a hardware wallet, you get $100 off from the Great Lattice wallet per member. And if you are also not already on Lens, you'll also be given early access to the Lens protocol and you'll be able to claim your handle. And last but not least, you will also be receiving a $500 flight reimbursement to any of our in-person events this year, which is ETH Global Istanbul and ETH India. This will apply to per member and for one event of these two. So you get all of that and any of the other prizes you may have won from any of our partners. And I wanna congratulate all of you one more time. So with this, let's uh, wrap up the hackathon and let's get ready for our summit. So last thing I wanna remind everybody here is that we got a few more things this year left to go. So you can still meet us all in person in Istanbul in three weeks at Dev Connect. That's happening on November 17th to 19th. And our last event of the year is going to be ETH India, which is also going to be our biggest in-person hackathon so far. So you can be, you can apply to all those events on our website and you can head over to ethglobal.com to learn more about the details and everything else you need to know to be at any of those events.